A Float with Henry Morgan. A Float with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. Recovering from the deadly fever, Geoffrey discovers that he is too late to save Kitty. She's been taken a captive by Dietz and Dolores to Cuba. Kitty cares naught about her fate, believing that Geoffrey has forsaken her. Knowing that Dolores is gone, but ignorant of her destination, Geoffrey goes with Hero to Port Royal to warn Captain Morgan, but finds that he too has sailed. Jeopardizing his own liberty, Geoffrey appeals to Sir Thomas Mockford for help, admitting that he is an escaped convict and tries to prove that he had no hand in stealing the Aztec necklace. He tells of his friendship with Dolores, but Sir Thomas interrupts him to ask how it was that Geoffrey became a convict. Yes, that has been puzzling me too. You are obviously a man of education and intelligence. How is it that you were convicted and sent out to this colony with the riffraff, the scum of humanity? That story has nothing at all to do with what I'm discussing tonight. It's done and can't be undone. I know what it means to my future by coming to you, Sir Thomas, tonight. It means my death. But it means much more to me to be able to save Henry Morgan, his men, and all their ships. I would still like to hear your story, Hunter. I will tell it to you, Sir Thomas, when I have made you believe what really happened on the night that the Aztec necklace was taken. Yes, you have yet to convince me that what you told me is true. It all seems so perfectly clear and logical now that I can't see how you can help but believe me. Well, if you won't tell us your own story... Get on with the story of the Aztec necklace and the woman who was masquerading as Sir Thomas's kinswoman. The friendship of the woman I thought with Aunt Nettle Lacey meant so much to me that I, I fell in love with her. I can see now that she set out to make me fall in love with her. I was lonely, desperately unhappy. It was an easy thing to do. Unhappy, lonely. What about Kitty? The story goes that you were overfond of her. Before I met the Spanish spy, I went to Kitty because of my loneliness and for comfort. She never meant anything to me. She was just a woman who could make me forget. And I appreciated that. I appreciated all she did for me. But for some reason, best known for herself, she fell in love with me. <laughs> How that fitted in with the plans Dietz made. Kitty fell in love with me in a jealous, possessive way. I couldn't make her understand that I, I was not in love with her, never had been. I tried to help her. I hated seeing her as the plaything for filthy seamen in the dirty tavern. But everything I tried to do for Kitty, she thought I was doing it because I was in love with her. Then I met the woman who was in your house, Sir Thomas. I tried to make Kitty understand that this other woman was part of the life which belonged to me, but I, I didn't succeed. But what has all this to do with the Aztec necklet? I believe the Aztec necklet was taken by Henry Morgan as a Spanish prize. I believe this woman knew of it. I believe the real Antoinette de Lacey fell into the Spanish hands. And this woman knew that you had never seen the real Antoinette, Sir Thomas. And so she learned all she could about her family and came in her stead. Yes, we've surmised that already. And she came for two purposes. One was to get the Aztec necklace, and the other was to betray Morgan into the hands of the Spanish. She has succeeded in one and is about to in the other. That is why I've come to you for help. Will you please carry on and tell us about the night the Aztec necklace was stolen? Unless you can prove you had no hand in it, Hunter, I don't want to hear anything else, and you'll go back to the fate which you so richly deserve. Not so long ago, a convict ship arrived in Port Royal. And aboard it was a convict named Glade. Yes, I know that ship. I was in charge of the convicts aboard it. Glade knew of me in my past life. I was with Kitty at the Dolphin Tavern. Glade recognized me. I tried the Nyat and immediately left the tavern. Previously, Kitty had seen me with a woman, the one you thought to be Admiral to Lacey from us. She was mad with jealousy. After I left the tavern, she no doubt got the whole story of my past from the man named Gleg. Then she must have told Dietz, don't you see what a perfect opportunity this was? Don't you see they were both in league to get the necklet? What a chance it was for them to betray me and have the necklet disappear at the same time. Yes, I can see what this man is getting at, Sir Thomas. Carry on, Hunter, I'm becoming very interested. But it had to be done at the same time. Their idea was that they should get their hands on the necklet and have me disappear that Dietz would make Kitty wear the necklace in the tavern on the same night, so that Morgan Seaman would see her wearing it. And then Dietz was to kidnap Kitty and take her away into hiding. Then, when the Spanish spy left for her homeland, Dietz and Kitty were to sail with her. I believe you've hit the nail on the head, Hunter. But uh, tell me, how did they know the hiding place of the necklace? Morgan said only you knew of it, Hunter. Well, perhaps I told her. 
No. You betrayed that trust. Not intentionally. But I did betray another trust. What was that? I'll come to that all in good time. After I left the Dolphin Tavern that night, after meeting Glegg, I was terrified that everything would be lost. I returned at once to the Flying Gull, hoping that I could see Captain Morgan and so beseech his aid. Yes, Morgan was here with me that night. I know. I gave word to the man on watch that no one was to come aboard who wanted to see me. I was frightened that Glegg would follow me. And then what happened? I went down to my quarters, hoping that Morgan would return aboard ship very soon. After a while, I received word that Dietz was waiting to see me on deck. I went up, and he told me he had come from Captain Morgan. <laughs> that was a lie. Morgan was with us. He also told me that Morgan had given him a precious stone, which I was to put away for him. Was the man Dietz alone? At the moment, yes. But I didn't see him come aboard. You mean, then, that the woman could have come aboard with him and hidden? Yes, and I think that is exactly what did happen. Dietz showed me a precious stone. He told me Morgan wished me to place it in a hiding place. He also told me that Morgan wished to see me in half an hour's time at the Dolphin Tavern. Although I wanted to see Morgan, I was a bit fearful about going. But I thought I'd better obey orders. I took the stone from Dietz. From where did the stone come from? I have no idea. I, I didn't examine it. To me, it looked like one which I'd seen in Morgan's hiding place. Perhaps Dietz had held that gem awaiting such an opportunity. Anyhow, I took the gem to Morgan's cabin. I placed it in the hiding place. Now, I believe that the woman was already hiding in the cabin and saw me put it away. I then returned to my quarters, not wishing to be seen about in the deck. I later went to the Dolphin Tavern. Whilst I was in my quarters, they must have escaped with the Aztec necklace, going straight back to the Dolphin Tavern where they waited for me. You went there to find Morgan? Yes. And I remember now... But as I approached, I saw drawn up on the other side a closed-in carriage. I think, no doubt, that in that carriage was Dietz and the woman. As I approached, Kitty came to me. And as soon as she spoke to me, two members of the watch arrested me. So it was Kitty who betrayed you? Yes. Goated into it by Dietz and the Spanish woman. As they took me away, I asked her to go to Morgan and tell him what really happened. And I believe she possibly tried to do it, but was stopped by Dietz, who made her wear the necklace into the tavern. And then, later in the evening, he took her away by force. You disappeared. Kitty disappeared, as well as the Aztec necklace. If all this is true, it's a devilish cunning plot. It can be proved by checking up with the authorities as to what I was doing on that night. But why was Kitty afraid? For two reasons. One, that it was to be thought she had run away with me. And the second... That Dietz wanted her for himself. I have no doubt that the payment for the part he played in getting the Aztec necklace was a passage back to a Spanish possession. And he wanted to take poor Kitty with him. And he succeeded. I, I can't bear to think of her fate. It's too terrible. So they've gone. And it seems as though the Aztec necklace and Kitty have both gone for good. But uh, you said you betrayed another trust. What was that? I believe in this woman who was masquerading as your kinswoman. I can see now that she very cleverly wormed from me information which she wanted, in honeyed words of love, as though concerned for my safety. She got me to tell her all that I knew of Henry Morgan's plans. She knows where he is going. She knows what he plans to do. Spain will give large rewards to anyone who captures Captain Morgan. That is why I've come to you, Sir Thomas. That's why I've thrown away my liberty and what chance I had of making a permanent escape because I can't bear the thought of Henry Morgan sailing unsuspectingly into a trap. And from the trap which they set, there will be no escape. But Morgan is gone. We, we can't recall him. I know to where he is going. I can give you full details. His ships are heavy and cumbersome. Send a fast ship off in pursuit. A ship which will overtake him before he reaches his destination. And... Before I return from where I escaped, I will tell you all that I know. Colonel Atbury, uh, what do you say about this story that we've just heard? I believe it, Sir Thomas, I believe it. Remember how Morgan said it just didn't add up together? He couldn't understand Hunter taking the necklet, giving it to Kitty, when this other woman was so anxious to get it. Yes, he did say that. Hunter, I believe your story but I must check up with the authorities. Well, freedom and life were nice while they lasted. Tell me, how did you come to be sent here? You told me the story of the Aztec necklace. Now tell me your own story. There's nothing much to tell, really. 
I was a fool who had too much trust in my fellow men. I was born to a life of ease, Sir Thomas, and comfort. I was always sorry for the underdark. I was against, and still am against, harsh laws which send human beings into captivity and slavery. Well, those convictions don't send you to Jamaica. They did in a way. Because a man came to me, a man named Glegg. He told me that he'd been in trouble once with the authorities, that they had hounded him ever since. He couldn't get a job. He had been driven by starvation back to crime. I gave him the job. He was with me some months, and then one day he suddenly disappeared. Oh, what happened? The next day, the Bow Street Runners came to my house. They searched it and found hidden in one of my bedrooms jewels. Jewels that had been stolen from my friends. They were only part of the missing jewels. Glegg had managed to get away with the rest, but he left those there just to incriminate me. I was arrested, tried. Sent out to Jamaica as a convict. And Hunter, how did you manage to get free and join Captain Henry Morgan? How was it that Geoffrey Hunter was abroad that night in Port Royal when he saved the life of Captain Henry Morgan? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan.